welcome on Watches TV, welcome at the Watches Club, and today we're introducing kind of a new format with uh, guests here at the club. And uh, the goal of this first edition is to come back on the Genial Watch Days, what we uh, saw there, the, talking about the ambiance, but talking also, of course, of the nice pieces uh, we uh, found there and uh, that we want to cover in this edition. So for this first edition, happy to welcome Hervé Born, independent uh, journalist, uh, and uh, Baudouin von S from Tourbillon Watch, uh, a blog specialized uh, on uh, mostly independent uh, brands. So first of all, what did you think of this edition of the Genia Watch Days, Hervé? Yes, for me, it's a very good, uh, very good fair. It's, we we had a very good ambiance, and it's a, it's a good rendezvous to to meet people after the summer break, and everybody is, is happy to to meet everybody, and uh, and we see uh, and the atmosphere is good because we're not uh, inside a huge hall mm. and uh, uh, through uh, always the same booth and uh, we're, we're going to, to shop, to boutique, to a showroom, to in the hotel suite and everything and we can speak uh, in front of the lake and the sun and uh, so I, I like this kind of uh, uh, this kind of fair, it's a, for me it's a fair 2.0. Yeah, a little bit more yeah. informal, exactly. a little bit more casual. Baudouin? Mm -hmm. what, what was quite really interesting so for that for that edition, it was the third one. It was not the first time, but the second time I had the opportunity to meet some clients, some collectors. Okay. For the first edition, uh, it was not the case, and for the second, uh, we had the opportunity to meet some of them, but it was like still a few. Mm -hmm. And for the third one, it was like more and more, and when we spoke to the brands, uh, they, are, they were quite happy because they had this opportunity to meet those collectors who come to them and uh, to, to see the novelties that I'm sure we speak about yes. during. <laughs> well, uh, indeed, that was a kind of a change also. Uh, just as a small re reminder, the, the Genio Watchware were established because big other shows didn't happen at the time, Watches and Wonder and so forth. And uh, for this edition, it was quite a, a tricky one or kind of a pivotal one because uh, since most of the brands had participated in Watches Wonder. They were questioning, I mean, do we really need to do another the show in, shows, a, in, yes. in a, such a short period of time after the, this watch shows? So uh, some of them were you know, just kind of questioning, will we do it again and so forth. But it seems indeed that everybody was extremely happy and uh, this event will uh, carry on. Of course, it's, I think it has evolved nicely. Uh, now they, well, they, I mean, we had a panel discussion. Uh, it was open to the public, which was something pretty nice. Okay. Not only during, uh, you could not only visit the, the pavilion, but I mean, if you booked it a little bit in advance, you could go and visit indeed all mm -hmm. those brands. And which means that there were indeed a lot of uh, And many brands sold the, sold the watches. Yeah, no, uh, the show, yeah. On, uh, I mean, watchmaking as a whole is doing pretty, pretty well uh, in, the, in this current uh, strange period. So that was kind of just a confirmation. But uh, indeed, the fact of having a lot of collectors coming in and uh, having also talked with some of them, I mean, you could see that they were really happy of this casual uh, atmosphere. So they could really interact, talk with the watchmakers, have more one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of uh, relations, mm -hmm. and that was really appreciated. And uh, yeah, the fact again that it was open to the public, I think, is, is, a, is a really positive sign. And uh, for me, I think what's kind of set the standard, the benchmark was uh, the, the Dubai Watch Week almost 10 years ago. Mm. And this now people are kind of taking this as indeed the, like the reference and uh, playing on with it. Of course, we're exactly. having really nice weather, which helped course, a lot. In September. But uh, well, seeing uh, each other at the end of the summer like that was uh, was, uh, was really But really I don't nice. know for you guys, but I do prefer the Geneva Watch Days compared to, to Watches and Wonders. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's if we have to choose one, phase. I choose yeah. uh, Geneva Watch Days. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's precisely, <laughs> The collectors, that's also what I heard. I mean, mm -hmm. it's that, like they're not that they're fed up, but I mean, it's just like that. Uh, I mean, the watch, uh, Watches and Wonder or those kind of events are a little bit too formal. Mm. And uh, having more of this informal, casual atmosphere was yeah. something that they really, really appreciate. The question is uh, the watchmaker, do, does they have enough time between the the Watches and Wonders, the Jamal Watch Day, to show novelties. Yeah, because this week we didn't see so many novelties. That's true, that's okay. true. I mean, a few brands were there with actually no novelties at all. Mm, no, uh, they no. were just there presenting, I mean, right. things that Even we have already seen. Even though a new color, yeah. no novelty at all. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. true. Uh, we were discussing just uh, before this, uh, this uh, video shoot of uh, some of the things we had seen, and in terms of trends, uh, well, we came for to the me, conclusion that we didn't uh, see any trend no, come no. up. No, uh, for me, uh, we didn't see any trend. The trend 
it's the creativity of the of the industry, the the dynamism after the pandemic. But um, we can we cannot say uh, why well, uh, we've seen so many blue dials, so many huge watches, or small small boxes, or something like that. Blue dials. Exactly. <laughs> it's quite accurate. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was quite eclectic. Exactly. Yeah. We have some very modern watches, like the it watch, and uh, very classy, like. Uh, I don't know, and uh, very <laughs> not so classic and vintage, like uh, with Oris and something yeah, like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, all in all, a positive edition. Looking exactly. forward for next year's edition, exactly. which will probably be it's even September, a little bit better. The sun. Yeah, no, it was uh, <laughs> was really nice. Uh, actually, some brands were saying, ah, oh, maybe we could do it a little bit later in the season, thing like idea. that. But I don't think no, it's the good idea is to be uh, the first week, of the end yeah. of the August and the first week of September. Yeah, and it's really kind of relaunching the exactly. new watch season also. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, the, the the timing is actually yeah. pretty pretty correct there. All right, so now let's talk watches. We have a few of these watches uh, with us. Uh, not all of them, but don't worry, we filmed them all, so you'll have <laughs> nice coverage of them. All right, so we'll start with Baudouin yes. and uh, your kind of first choice. I did uh, three cho choices, and the first one would be the Outlands one. So, first of all, I would like to speak about more about the Outlands name. So, the funny behind it is quite really funny. So, the story is the founders were on a train going to Neuchâtel to meet some investors, uh, uh, to, to be able to really launch uh, the, the brand. But uh, they had a problem. So they had a philosophy the, uh, the behind the product, they had a design, but no names, no brand's name. And they were like trying to find a way to really find the right, uh, right uh, brand's name, who is like quite not easy. And they ended up like playing with the, with the name Neuchâtel. So basically, Outlands is a mix uh, that they just took each letter, but they mix them and they ended yeah, up anagram. with Outlands. Yeah, an anagram of Neuchâtel. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the brand was launched in the early 2000s uh, because we did a little uh, video report on, on um, their presence here at Junior Watch Days and one of the comments on the video was like, oh, it looks a bit like a Seven Fridays, such a copy and thing like that. But no, 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 no. Uh, Outlands, this TV shape uh, uh, philosophy dates back from almost 20 years and they're the ones that kind of came up with this uh, design approach. So about that piece, so it's a Vagabond Series 4 and limited to 28 uh, pieces. Uh, the, in terms of pricing, it's uh, 30,000 uh, Swiss francs. So exclude taxes, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, waterproof to uh, 100 meters. Mm -hmm. And in terms of case, it quite, for me, it's quite huge. Like it's... Uh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I have a tiny wrist. It's uh, a real TV. But yeah, you can... Like, it's bigger than an Apple Watch. But uh, quite, quite really, really impressive uh, with a 72-hour power reserve. Why I did I choose that watch? Uh -huh. It's not because of the brand's name yeah. or the brand's history. It's a philosophy behind it. So when we look at the Vagabond, they, for me, from a point of view, they they really played well uh, with the uh, space and emp emptiness. Uh -huh. So when you look at the thunder of the watch, you, uh, you are able to look at uh, their reinterpretation of the star wheel complication. And if there is, like, the name is Vagabond Series 4, so there is like three other uh, series mm -hmm. that uh, have been done. But this one, for me, it's the uh, best well finished mm -hmm. in terms of visibility who is like way easier to when you compare to others. Yes. So for that, I would like, like to, 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 to say well done to the teams because I'm sure it's not, it was not that easy to, to create. So, and also about that, what I like, it's for one hand, it was like the Star Wheel complication. I love that complication. Of course. It's very classic, but it's quite very, very interesting. And when you look at the watch, uh, there is like multiple layers and they created like a 3D, uh, 3D impression on that uh, when you look at the dial. So the case is in fact strange, can't find it anywhere, like with that TV shape. And you have that star wheel uh, inter reinterpretation and in fact the philosophy behind it when you look, when they said, when I interviewed Samuel, who is like uh, the actual uh, brand manager, yes. he said there is a philosophy behind the watch, yeah. behind the, the, the brand who is look at the passage of time. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Do, 
do not read the time, but look at it, mm -hmm. which is... Take your time. Yeah, take your time to look at the time, like the passage of time. Mm -hmm. And I do like that, that, that philosophy. And in a certain way, you can say, okay, I understand why they choose a TV shape. Yeah. Like you look at it, yeah. but you do not like read the time. Yeah. So it was my first choice. Just a little uh, addition. Uh, Outlands also introduced the linear um, yeah. watch there. And uh, so I also uh, questioned uh, Samuel about, I mean, which one people prefer? preferred or, I mean, were they <coughs> both uh, appreciated, the same thing like that. And actually, he told me that they were pretty, well, not antagonizing, but a little yeah, bit, okay. is that people either liked the, the Vagabond yeah. or the Linear. And yeah. it was difficult to have somebody that liked both, both. of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's kind oh, of yeah. a Vagabond. The Linear is quite, well, yeah, yeah. but... It's yeah. better than the Vagabond. Okay, and uh, again, just a little thing to add. Uh, to add. I mean, in terms of movement, uh, the Outlands company belonged to the Melon uh, family, which owned also H. Moser, so there are some uh, bridges, obviously, between the two. Uh, and uh, the, the movement is something that is, I mean, uh, has well-proven movement, uh, for sure. Good one. Yes. All right, Hervé, your turn. Next My watch. turn. Cool. Uh, let's begin with my crush of the... Of okay, the let's do that. <laughs> this is Bulgari, the, the, the new Octo Finissimo in pink gold. Uh -huh. I really like this, this, this watch. And uh, it's not, the frame of the, of the box is very interesting, very complicated. And, uh, and it's, it's, for me, it's a, a, a really a different watch. Yeah. And like we were mentioning... And the design is very important. Yeah. And it's also kind of the first one that comes into precious metal, because before it was exactly. more mainly titanium. Exactly, but it's still titanium. Steel, titanium. Yeah. Now it's at pink gold, so it's more precious. It became kind of a jewel. Yeah. And uh, let's say everything changed, but nothing changed, because it's the same size, the same bracelet, the same, same movement. Uh, I think the power reserve is... Uh, is uh, it's quite long, indeed. Yeah, 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 at least like five that. days, yeah, maybe, maybe even more. Yeah. And, uh, yes, and uh, with this ultra-flat uh, yeah. caliber. And the, the, the color combination is interesting. And the color combination is very interesting. The pink gold with a chocolate dial, and it's very warm. And for me, it's very Italian. It, this is an Italian design, yeah. and this is Bulgari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, and, and it's quite expensive, I'm sorry, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's gold, it's a, it's a gold price. <laughs> very true, very true. So I'm gonna, not going to talk about a watch, I'm going to talk about uh, another time-telling object. Uh, and this one, this one I found really interesting was uh, with the guys of Lippe, who came up with a new edition of uh, their, you know, a few years back, they had come up with a time fast, uh, it was kind of a, a car that uh, was telling time, uh, based on one of those kind of old Bugatti-shaped type of, uh, of uh, racing cars. And now still with racing car, but more oriented uh, with AC Cobra type of thing. Uh, but one funny thing with this new thing is that <coughs> with the previous watch, uh, to wind it, you, know, you just have to pull it back, you know, like one of those uh, nice toys that we used to have. Uh, but the problem is that when it was fully wound, uh, obviously it, the, the, the car wouldn't move anymore. And uh, people uh, that have acquired this, uh, this, uh, this um, clock, yeah, they were a little bit frustrated because they still wanted to continue. So what they did is that they came up with a kind of a, a gear system where you can put it in like neutral position. So once it's fully wound, you can continue to play around with it. And you set the time with the steering wheel. There's a uh, little uh, kind of funny gadgets. You have a little key that you turn, and then you have you see the, the cooling fan working. You have uh, animation with the eight cylinders of the engine going around, thing like that. It's 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 a really it's, it's a, a, a for, yeah it's it's, it's really nice. And uh, I think aesthetically also, I mean the, the way things the, the how the movement is placed. It just fits in really nicely, uh, like you had like two drivers there, um, really nice ones, so congrats to them. So right. you, play, you play a lot I with it. I played a lot with it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, exactly, no, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, really nice one. Baudouin, next watch. The next watch, the next watch will be the, the Coram, uh, the Coram Bumble 47, in collaboration with a French artist named Aero. Uh, why I choose that watch? First of all, in terms of uh, design, the bubble has been uh, created and launched in early 2000s. 2000s, yes. And directly inspired by a well-known watch, uh, as, uh, the Rolex Deep Sea. And so the record why, one, the yeah, one the with that, yeah. Which is quite interesting. And I, uh, in terms of spec, it's, this one is limited to 88 uh, pieces. Uh, in terms of price, 7,200 uh, 7, Swiss franc, 47 millimeter. 
a bit too wide for me. Yeah. Uh, but maybe the, the brand will be able to, to do uh, like a, a work on, on that. Uh, waterproof to 100 meters, so quite okay. It's from like a, it's average and uh, it's still black PVD. Mm -hmm. So, which is quite cool. Personally, why I choose that watch is uh, hard work. When you look at it, it's directly inspired by. Yeah, yeah, it's only about the dial. Yeah. That when you uh, are you wearing your bevel one? Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> we'll get back on this in I'm a sec. Not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, in fact, yes, you, <coughs> you buy that watch only about the dial. Yeah. Uh, and that one, I like the fact that it's directly related to uh, art creation. Mm -hmm. So, this one is inspired by Aero artwork, and this one is named uh, Rose, and mm -hmm. he's done that uh, in his Black series. Yeah. And what is quite interesting when you look at the dial, it's multiple layers. Yeah. So, what you see is a black rose. Uh, it's like uh, uh, it's like a stencil, mm -hmm. and it's uh, I forgot the name of it. Yes, it's a skeletonized brass, yeah. and under what you have the uh, aero creation. Okay. So it's like yes, that uh, multiple layer playing with colors, and you have that huge bubble. Uh, uh, and this is the exclusive uh, uh, aero creation for the yeah. for the watch, or no, 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 no? No. Uh, or it's a masterpiece we knew before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a masterpiece he created. I don't know when. I okay. can check it, but it's a unique piece. He didn't draw something for Khan. No, but it may be quite interesting for the future. Maybe yeah. to do a thing. Okay, you could create yes. like something interesting. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> Too easy to do. <laughs> that would be almost too obvious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, quite a funny watch to, to wear to play with. The readability of the dial could be improved, but you do not buy it for, for the real time. No, 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 for sure, for sure. Another thing interesting about this watch is the kind of the original certificate that comes along. Exactly, <laughs> loved it. Like it's a, a, the, the watch certificate, it's a, in fact like a, yeah, it's a hard piece. Absolutely. And it's huge and I, if I were able to, to buy it, it was only for the watch certificate, like to put on my wall say, you look at it, like it's hard piece and only about that. So yeah. it was quite, quite funny and I, Really uh, appreciate the work that they've done, like to, to really create like an atmosphere around the watch. So yeah, you have yeah. that, but you have also the box who is uh, hand painted by the the artist. But you have also that watch certificate, which yeah. is quite like. I mean, we wish the best of luck to Corn because I mean it's a brand that has been struggling a little bit, to be yeah. honest, over the last few years, and uh, they're really trying to revive it nicely and make it trendy again. And actually, well, you were mentioning, but during the in, uh, well, this spring's uh, Watches in Wonder period, uh, we went to visit Gorham and I had seen uh, this one. It's also a bubble. It's my first bubble I ever bought. I mean, actually, the first Gorham I ever bought uh, with a nicely, you know, with a skull, which is quite impressive. It has this x ray effect and so forth. And I just got it the other day during the Gina watch day, so I was very happy and I'm still wearing it. Anyhow, and another thing that I would like to mention about Gorham is that. They're cool guys. They're nice yeah, guys. They're, they're cool really, guys. Uh, they're really hard to mark. Yes, I mean they're, 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 It's a nice team, and uh, we wish them, of course, all the best. Yeah. Erwin, next, next, absolutely. Uh, for me, the next one will be uh, Oris one. Okay. The new uh, Diver sixty five. Uh, this, this is a tool watch, uh, diver watch, uh, really with a big vintage spirit. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same that uh, was created in uh, nineteen sixty five. The first uh, diver mm -hmm. watch from Oris. And the, the, the thing here is they, they decide to put inside the, the manufacturer in-house movement, mm. uh, the caliber number four, 400, I think, yes. The first automatic manufacturer movement of the brand. And so uh, when you have, when you get, we, did, we, we don't have the watch. When you have the watch in your hands, you have to, to look yeah, at the- You look at, at directly to exactly the Exactly. Flip it around. Because you can see the caliber and it's, that's ready to get to, to mix tool watch and manufacture movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the, there is beautiful dark grey dial and the, 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 the bezel in aluminium, the black aluminium. Uh, this is a nice one. And uh, the power reserve is 120 hours, five uh -huh, days. Uh -huh. Yes, five days. Yeah. And the watch is guaranteed during 10 years. I mean, that's so quite, uh, very interesting. Yeah, that's, that's quite a yeah. statement. I mean, I mean, exactly. the brand really trusts the product and exactly. 10 years, we, exactly. that's, uh, and that's, that's nice. And of course, with, uh, always, it's always the case with uh, Oris, the value for money, the value for money is excellent. Yeah. It's like around 
3,000 euros for the watch. Yeah, no, no, no indeed. I mean, yeah. it's a nice yeah, brand, yeah. indeed, nice value and for to money. Begin, I think this, 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 it's a good, uh, good brand to begin a collection. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, that's sure. a good yeah, yeah, spend. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to spend yeah. a lot of money yeah. and you have a good watch, mechanic movement. Yeah, no, absolutely true. Mm. All right, uh, so mm. for me, the next choice uh, is going to be Arnold & Son. Last yeah. year, they had presented the, the Lu Magna, Luna Magna, quite an impressive uh, moon watch, uh, yeah. moon phase watch uh, with this, uh, with this, uh, Please. yeah, uh, with this uh, 3D um, huge moon there uh, sticking, uh, just floating a little bit in that dial. Uh, came at a time with an aventurine dial. They did also some uh, one, uh, kind of a crazy one with a ruthenium dial. It was uh, really nice. But this year, I mean, they they, they made the link between this. Uh, astronomical indication and space more obvious uh, using a uh, meteorite uh, dial yeah. uh, which is looks really really nice it looks very uh, sober actually it looks very you know kind of not plain that would be uh, rude to say this but i mean it looks it's, it's very elegant uh, obviously the the 3d moon is uh, also uses Heavy. also yeah the, to, to machine uh, half this uh, this globe this bowl uh, out of uh, uh, out of uh, meteorites is obviously extremely complicated to do and to and I mean there's, there's a lot of waste in the process yeah, but uh, yeah I really like this watch actually is uh, selected uh, in the, this year's uh, GPHG uh, watch, and yeah. looks really I mean uh, I find it really quite interesting different elegant like it all right good one so the last one will be like the H480 Asteroid Supernova Blue. Mm -hmm. Is this Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for today at least, okay, for good. today. What I do like with that piece, so for me when I look at uh, H480, there is two pillars. The one is craziness. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that they've done with the moon runner, the interpretation of complication, like traditional complication, they go crazy. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to the team. I love the, the design. They've done the, the great, uh, the, a great, uh, great job. On the other hand, the other pillar is like more traditional in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that piece, I see a bridge between traditional uh, watchmaking. They respect, uh, they respect it a lot. Uh, they are working with, um, they developed the movement with uh, Eric Goudre, if I'm right. They, yeah, they, 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 well, yeah, they, they so. try to improve yeah. uh, the movement uh, with the uh, development specifically made by uh, Eric. Yeah. yeah, so it's a huge piece, mm -hmm. a huge piece. I have a tiny wrist, but it fits on my wrist. Mm -hmm. So to that, I would like to say congratulations in terms of uh, case design, 48 diameter, which is like quite big. And, and in terms of pricing, because I, I gave it uh, already, it's around uh, 70,000 mm -hmm. uh, Swiss francs. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. The, the, the iconic uh, fluidic uh, complication, yeah. which is like the, the signature of H Y T. Mm -hmm. I love it. And you have like that bridge with that arrow showing the, the minutes, and you have also the power reserve and a small second. Yeah. S simple. Not simple, but when you look at it, it's easy to read, uh, and I would like to, to say... An original. Yeah, and, because I, and I heard like you, you, you also loved it. Yes, I loved it. Um, and the question is... I love it because it's very original, yeah. and it's a new way to read time. And, uh, and I like the skeleton caliber with the two tanks for the, yeah. for the Friedrich uh, uh, system. And the thing is, um, not the new CEO for, for like one year, I, uh, yeah. David De Cerato. David De Cerato is, but is also a design creator for mm -hmm. the brand and is passionate by vintage. He did a lot of vintage things with Mont Blanc and then uh, Tudor. So the question is, uh, can we imagine a new uh, heat watch in a vintage way? Vint vintage way, yes. With a NATO strap, why not? Yeah. Or with a bronze case or something like that. A yeah. smaller, smaller box. It had see. some uh, like um, well many years ago with a watch that had used kind of uh, the codes of traditional watchmaking, yeah. not vintage, but traditional codes of watchmaking, and that one was actually the combination was uh, quite interesting. Yeah. It was quite like the H two zero collection, yeah. which is yeah. like directly inspired by. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. This one is directly inspired by this. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. And obviously, I mean, for HYT, it is kind of a new start for them. Uh, they've also gone through complicated times, <laughs> and uh, time will tell if uh, things will uh, work out for them. Uh, but, but this uh, is a niche in the watch yeah, absolutely, niche. Absolutely, uh, complete That's, niche. Yeah. That piece is I do love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the type niche. of watchmaking I'm looking for. Yeah. So, but that's great. All right. So, uh, indeed, it was one of your favorites. Um, for, for me, one of my favorite of the show uh, was the uh, H. Moser Streamliner Tourbillon yes. uh, Vanta Black. I think that Amazing. watch, yeah, just uh, in red gold. Yeah, because that, that's also <laughs> the first... We love gold today. Yeah. We love gold. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and rose gold, sorry. And that's also <laughs> the first time they're using uh, precious metal on the Streamliner mm -hmm. uh, collection, and it works actually pretty well. Uh, I mean, that special bracelet looks really... And the contrast between that. the black dial and yeah, the... Yeah, it, it, I think it really works. So it's, for me, it's kind of a nice combination of everything H. Moser stands for. I mean, you really have a nice movement, uh, tubing or movement, obviously, uh, this Vanta Black, and it just, the combination with the, 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 this rose uh, gold uh, looks, looks really nice. Yeah, so yeah. modern, classical, unique, different, I really, really, really liked it. Agreed. I'm not a, a, a gold watch guy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have to admit. Uh, but when when you look at the watch, yes, yeah. it's like you you can't you can't say it's not a good job. Yeah. You, you have to applause the, the the work they've done. But personally, I would not wear it. Yeah, uh, I prefer the other uh, streamliners. Yeah, more. Yeah, I had the opportunity to speak to a client of mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. and say. What I'm looking for in indies, it's like being uh, like you have a banger on your on your wrist, but you are the only one who is able to enjoy it. Yeah. So you can wear it like on, on the street mm -hmm. with like yeah, nobody knows that you have like. What a is it exactly? Less risky, let's say. Yeah, that's <laughs> less risky. <laughs> Imagine you are wearing like a Carré Vuitton line, yeah. which is like like crazy watches, yeah. and nobody nobody knows no. like if you it's more dangerous to to wear or Rolex than the Carré Vuitton line. Definitely. So. I say, and when it uh, said to me, I was like, yeah, exactly what I'm looking for at in this uh, in yeah. this brand. Yeah. So it's, for me, it's a bit too flashy, mm -hmm. uh, and I would not wear it because it's gold, and I'm not like a gold watch yeah. guy. So. Well, and that's fine. We can all have opinions, <laughs> and that's what watchmaking is all about. You know, exactly. it's a lot of subjectivity, and that's fine. There's no truth in uh, there's no absolute truth. It's yeah. just a question of personal taste. Exactly. So that's cool. Um, other uh, watches that you appreciated? Uh, yes, although, but it not, uh, it's not novelties. I would like to, to say hi to Trilob. They've done the, the work they've done. It was quite great. And also uh, Formex, they've done a great job. But yeah. it was not uh, yeah. during the Geneva watch. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no more news for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and regarding Trilob, I mean, it's quite astonishing how yeah. fast they've developed yeah. and uh, they have really kind of, I mean, it's... And it's a real concept. Yeah, no that, uh, exactly. It has really uh, their own, uh, its own yeah. identity. It's uh, it's indeed pretty cool. Hervé, another watch? Yes, why not? We, we can speak about MBNF. Sure, that's uh, a <laughs> <real> pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So I like the idea. I heard that uh, Maximilien Besser was fed up to to was uh, unable to show his watches during uh, the early days by the pool uh, mm. uh, for running or something like that because it's so fra too fragile, too, too precious. To, too much, too much. And so he decided to launch the Evo collection. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a, for him, it's a, it's a sports watch, well, very, very luxury watch, uh, because it's quite expensive, I think 70,000 uh, francs. Like but the, the watch is waterproof, the watch with, uh, with a rubber strap, the, the box is very ergonomic, so it's, it's more easy to, to, to wear in all situations. And uh, that's why I like the idea. I don't I, I don't have a crush for this watch, but I have the idea of to, to think about something more easy to wear uh, with this, uh, the concept of MBNF. Yeah. Well, I do have a crush uh, for <laughs> this watch, I have to say. I find it, I really, yeah, absolutely, no, I really like it. I think they've really uh, added a touch of modernity uh, in it with these, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the color combination. Yeah, the it, it just, it, for me, it just works really nice. It has something quite edgy and at the same time, it stays, remains quite classic, if we can say so about uh, uh, MBNF. So it, this is the, yeah, the LM split Evo uh, version, split for split escapement. And this is something that's that... That's a question. That's uh, a question, okay. What is the split escapement? Okay, okay. 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 Uh, well, it's something that actually dates from uh, the, the, develop, the development of the, 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 the QP, mm. uh, where for mechanical reasons, they indeed had to split 
the, the balance wheel uh, with the uh, anchor system. Uh, and because the anchor system couldn't be on the LM1, you have the balance wheel and the uh, anchor, which are next to the other, kind of classical. But for yeah. the QP, they couldn't they do that. Good. They had to uh, split it. Uh, and this is obviously quite complicated because to do so, you need to have like a really long axis. And this one has to be very precisely manufactured to, you know, just to be accurate, basically, accurate, yeah. uh, as basic as that. So they had done a few years back, uh, they came up with a simplified version, let's say, of the movement of the uh, using the architecture of the movement of the QP, of having indeed just this balance wheel floating like this with nothing around. Uh, and the escapement uh, underneath on the on the movement side, and so this is kind of an evolution, a sportier evolution of this yeah. uh, of this model. And personally, I think it's going to be a massive hit uh, for 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 MBNF. I'm really um, they have kind of a home run with this one, and uh, there was a limited edition presented, but this the the other one will not be limited. It's going to be okay. part of the collection. Limited uh, in terms of. Production, production capabilities, yeah. that's for sure, but it's, uh, it's going to be part of the, uh, of the, uh, of, of the collection. Good. Good. So, any other thing you wanted to add about uh, Genia Watch Days? No, I think we're done. Okay, that's good. Well, uh, it was indeed a really enjoyable experience. Yeah. We had a, you really a blast. Uh, it was nice to do uh, indeed this kind of nice little talk here. <laughs> and it's something that will be repeated with uh, sometimes See other guests, of soon. course. I hope so. <laughs> and we'll uh, change, uh, change topics, change people, depending on uh, what change we want people. to. Sometimes, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, you don't have to, don't be stressed, you know, you, but you'll be <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back, that's for sure. And uh, also for us, it's a, it's a way of uh, doing something a little bit differently because as maybe some of you heard, uh, we've introduced this uh, incredible uh, uh, project uh, with Horopedia, which is going to take us a lot of time. So we need to do things maybe a little bit uh, differently, but this is all very exciting. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for Bye. your comments and so forth. Uh, and uh, well, viva the Genia Watch Days. I'm looking forward for next, uh, next year's edition. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. All the best. Bye. -bye. Bye.